How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. So for those of you looking for VPN extensions for your Chrome browser, well, I've got three of the best choices. I've got ExpressVPN, NordVPN, and Surfshark. These are overall the top three VPNs. Um, now, with regards to uh, extensions, you do have Chrome extensions as well as Firefox extensions. But today we're specifically talking about Chrome. So let's dive into the extensions. Okay, so we've got ExpressVPN, Nord, and Surfshark right here. Now, while you are able to use the VPN extensions, if you get yourself a subscription with one of these VPNs, I would recommend just using the application itself. Now, if for whatever reason you still want to use the extension, you can do that. And you can even do that through the uh, application itself without even having to download the extension. And you can do that by going to options, split tunneling, and only allowing the selected apps to use the VPN. So for example, you can have Google Chrome use the VPN while the rest of your network is outside the VPN tunnel. So this is a great way to use the application, um, but only use it on your Chrome browser. But why I like to use the application itself, it's because the application will secure the entirety of uh, your network instead of just the Google Chrome browser. Uh, but if for whatever reason, you don't want to download the application, maybe you're on your work um, computer and you just want the extension, you can definitely do that. Uh, you've got over 3000 servers in 94 countries with uh, ExpressVPN. Keep in mind that you won't be getting all the features with uh, the application with the extension. You kind of get a, a lighter version of it. So for example, you'll notice that we don't have a kill switch. Uh, and with regards to split tunneling, you also don't have split tunneling. Um, if we go to the Nord VPN one, you've got over 5,400 servers in uh, 60 countries and you can kind of browse through here. And with the split tunneling here, it's not gonna be app-based split tunneling, it's just gonna be uh, IP or website split tunneling. So you can exclude specific IP addresses or um, specific websites that you choose. If we go to privacy control, as you can tell right here, we have an ad blocker. It also blocks malicious websites. And if we go to the settings, there's nothing else you can mess with here besides exporting. Um, if you would like to export your list of websites excluded from the VPN tunnel, you can do that, uh, but it needs to be in a JSON file. Uh, or again, you can just use the application itself, go to split tunneling, and pick which applications, for example, let's say enable VPN for selected apps only, and it can be Google Chrome. Uh, so yeah, that's one way to uh, do things here. Now with the Surfshark extension, it does have the most features. Uh, so you do have an ad blocker, pop-up blocker, data breach alert, and malware alert. So it is pretty feature filled considering that is just an extension. And if we go to the VPN, I do like how it's very similar uh, to the user interface of the uh, VPN application itself. NordVPN is a little bit different and it may confuse some users, but you still do have the list of servers. You just don't have the uh, map design of NordVPN, whereas ExpressVPN and uh, Surfshark remain sort of almost exactly the same, really. Uh, okay, so going back to Surfshark, let's see here, you've got over 3,200 servers in 100 countries. You don't get multi-hop uh, servers, which are servers that give you um, double the encryption by routing your connection to two servers instead of just one, but you still get static IP servers. Um, let's go to the settings. You have VPN settings right here, such as the WebRTC blocker and auto-connect. Um, if we take a look at the clean web settings, again, this is what we saw right here at the dashboard. So you can go ahead and turn these off or on, uh, at whatever you choose, really. The bypass list, if there are any websites that you'd like to uh, bypass the VPN. And that's pretty much it with regards to uh, Surfshark. Though, again, you can go to the settings here, go to VPN settings pick uh, bypasser, which is pretty much split tunneling. And you can actually choose specific websites or IP addresses that you would like to bypass the VPN tunnel. So yeah, again, 
if it were up to me and you're able to download uh, a VPN on your computer, I would definitely recommend downloading the application to secure your entire connection. Uh, but if for whatever reason you don't want to download the application, you can definitely get the browsers and you're still able to stream your favorite shows, whichever one you're using. Of course, the application will always be more consistent. You're able to torrent safely. All of these VPNs also have very solid privacy policies that are independently audited. So you can trust them with your information, knowing that they're not going to give it out uh, to any governments or ISPs. And they have very reliable speeds. So that is pretty much it for this video. If you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below. Of course, I have tested over a couple of dozen VPNs and I've narrowed it down to these three as the best overall. And they all vary in budgets and features. So you can pick and choose depending on your specific situation and your own needs, of course, and budget. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them, you'll find the full reviews uh, in the description below as well, besides the discounts and pricing links. Either way, they're all covered by a 30 day money back guarantee in case you're not satisfied for whatever reason. Besides that, comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.